Hi everyone and welcome to the next video in the series on the currently ongoing Tal Memorial. This time we're going to have a look at the only win from round 5 which went to world champion Vichy Anand in his game against the Hungarian Petrosian Peter Leko. Anand had the white pieces and open with d4 which he's been playing more and more these days and Leko answered sym symmetrically with d5 and then came a semi-slav defense by transposition with c4, c6, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3 and e6. Vichy now went for the anti meron gambit line, bishop g5, h6 and bishop h4 which is the anti moscow variation, a line that has seen a recent resurgence at top level. Black wins a pawn here but white gets good compensation after d takes c4 and e4 with a stronger pawn center, better developed pieces and good initiative already due to the threat of e5 which would win at least uh, temporarily the pawn back with a better position. g5 is the book line to counter that threat and that's what Liko played and theory is extensive in this open going beyond move 30 in some lines in this game it continues right up to move 22 continuing first with bishop g3 and now b5 which just maintains the pawn at c4 and then some standard development with bishop e2 bishop b7 white castling then knight bd7 knight e5 bishop g7, knight takes d7, knight takes d7 and bishop d6 which stops black from castling for the moment but we're still well within the book lines and Liko now prepared a central push by further supporting his pawn at b5 with a6 then came a4 and e5 and Vichy now gambited a second pawn with bishop g4 and incredibly after Liko accepted it with e takes d4 he played e5 which is gambiting his knight on c3 but as I said this is all still theory and Liko declined the knight here and played c5 let's have a look at what happens if he accepts it if d takes c3 the strongest move for white is e6 with immediate mate threats for example if f takes e6 and bishop h5 is mate so that's obviously no good knight f6 is the best defense but now comes bishop h5 again with mate threats and black's best hope is knight takes h5 but now comes queen takes h5 forcing queen f6 if instead queen takes d6 now queen takes f7 is winning because it's check and after king d8 as queen takes g7 it's uh, far better for white um, so Queen f6 is the best move, but now comes e takes f7 check, king d8, rook f d1, and after c2, bishop e5 would check from the rook, and uh, pawn takes would check, and rook takes d1 check, king e7, bishop takes f6 check, bishop takes f6, and queen e2 check. White is easily winning. Fritz gives an advantage of over 5 pawns here. Rook d7 is coming next, and the pawn at f7 can't be taken, or it's a force mate in 7 moves. If uh, king takes f7 and rook d7 check, king g6 puts up the most resistance, but now queen e4 check, and king h5 is the only move. Now queen f3, and it's mate on 5, with best play from both sides, g4, queen f5 check, bishop g5, queen f7 check, king h4, g3 check, king h3, queen h5 check, bishop h4, and queen takes h4 is mate. So unsurprisingly, uh, Liko avoided that whole line after e5 and played c5 instead. So then came rook e1 from Anand, which is again leaving the knight to be taken, but Leko again declined it and instead took on e5, gaining three pawns for his knight after bishop takes e5 and castling, bishop takes g7, king takes g7, and knight e2. And we're still well in book lines, believe it or not, right up to another couple of moves with f5, bishop h5 and f4 and here Vichy finally deviated from known theory deciding to sacrifice back material in order to stop the horde of pawns coming marching down on the queen side here with uh, knight takes d4 because after c takes d4 he gets immediate attacking chances with rook e6 and bishop c8 is the best defense which allows rook d g6 check 
King g7 and a takes b5 where black can't take back or he's going to lose the rook at a8 and again Liko found the correct defense with rook f6 and a pair of rooks came off but the rook takes f6 queen takes f6 and now Anand got his material back with queen c2 check and after bishop f5 queen takes c4 and then came again the best move from Liko with rook c8 and now queen d5 which is a strong centralization Liko now captured with a takes b5 and Anand took the time to give his king some breathing room with h3 and then came king h8 which is a bit passive from Liko rook f8 would have been a more active continuation and the problem for him here is that he has two isolated pawns and Anand is now able to pick them off fairly easily and when the smoke clears he'll be a pawn up after which it will be more or less a ma matter of technique for white to win and there's not much that Liko can do about it except hope for a mistake which is very unlikely from someone as gifted as Anand he now leveled again on material with queen takes b5 and white starting to get good initiative now because after Liko's next move rook f8 there's rook a6 and suddenly white is better with over a pawn up in terms of position with a decisive breakthrough on the queen side queen g7 was what Liko played and again this is the best move it maintains the defense of the pawn at d4 which Anand now pressurized further with rook d6 then came d3 and queen b6 adding pressure to black's h pawn and here came a small inaccuracy from Liko with queen e5 but it was king h7 which holds things together and makes white's task more difficult after Liko's queen e5 here Anand has a selection of good moves and he chose an instructive example with bishop g6 and it's instructive because the instinctive thing would be to take on h6 but this would allow Liko a stronger counterplay and here however Liko again played a small inaccuracy with d2 and now white is starting to get a good advantage after bishop takes f5 and queen takes f5 and queen d4 check and not rook takes h6 because now will come king g7 and white can't stop black from queening the d-pawn best play continues rook d6 queen b1 check king h2 d1 queen queen c7 check king g8 rook takes d1 and queen takes d1 with a winning advantage to black so queen d4 check now king h7 and queen takes d2 and again black now has no counterplay and it's a very important concept especially in the end game to restrict your opponent's counterplay as much as possible whilst maintaining your advantage and Anand gives us a textbook example here Liko is hopeless and planless and Anand's control of the D file in particular is decisive Liko struggled on with rook f7 allowing Anand to strengthen his position first with some prophylaxis f3 stopping any g4 ideas and after h5 gaining initiative with rook d5 and after queen g6 came queen a5 threatening the g pawn so rook g7 and now h4 and here white has a winning advantage as Anand is going to win another pawn now Liko gave a check with queen b1 and after king h2 he picks up the b pawn but objectively speaking his position has collapsed after queen takes b2 and rook takes g5 in order to avoid the loss of another pawn Liko has to capture here but after rook takes g5 and queen takes g5 he resigned seeing that he was going to lose another pawn and thus inevitably the game so it was an instructive win from Anand who played very accurately and showed his excellent technique it's interesting that Liko lost without making any out and out blunders and today Anand drew against Magnus Carlsen and at the moment he's at the top of the table as Kramnik's match against Ponomaryov is ongoing but it looks like he could win and clinch the lead from Vichy by half a point Ivanchuk on the other hand had a great win against Morozovic but I won't be able to make a video about that game for a couple of days because tomorrow I have a tournament game down in Dublin so I hope you enjoyed this game anyway and please leave any comments or thoughts Thanks very much.